Hi. I'm looking here at uh, yesterday's uh, ABC News online. That's the uh, 8th of March 2014. It was uh, an article about Elizabeth Broderick, the Australian Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission Sex Discrimination Commissioner, and she was uh, doing her performance about International Women's Day. And uh, this article's a bit interesting, and I've had a look through it. Sex Discrimination Commissioner says men must empower women. That's interesting. Men must empower women. So sisters are not doing it for themselves, apparently. They're not doing it for themselves. Sex Discrimination Commissioner says lack of women in Parliament impacts on, ma on major issues facing women by Jen King. Firstly, I think if we're going to talk about uh, power, empowerment of women, we should look uh, firstly, and if it's coming from the Sex Discrimination Commissioner, we should look firstly at the Office of the Sex Discrimination Commissioner. There's been quite a quota of women commissioners. Indeed, every women commissioner, uh, every, every commissioner since the, uh, uh, since the inception of the uh, uh, women's uh, of the uh, sex discrimination commissioner has been a woman. There have been the odd men, but they were only relieving their only stand-in ones. So, in point of fact, the uh, the uh, sex discrimination commissioner is quite a quota, if you like, quite a quota. I suppose it could be called token by some. At uh, women, the women's commission, I predict that the next sex discrimination commissioner will be another female. And I also predict it will be another misandrist female, sadly. Yes, I think we should look at the Office of the Sex Discrimination Commissioner herself if she's talking about women and power. Sex Discrimination Commissioner Elizabeth Broderick, photo. Elizabeth Broderick says men must empower women to enable gender equality to occur. Is that so, I ask? But she herself is sexist and misandrist. I've made that clear in other videos about male genital mutilation. Only recently, some boys under the uh, under the age of 18 were sitting in pools of blood. Had those uh, boys died, Elizabeth Broderick wouldn't have uttered a word in their in their defence in in the uh, as in the in in defending their genital integrity. She wouldn't have, but of course she would always utter a word about uh, how how wrong how bad female genital mutilation is. But um, yes, I'm saying I've said in the past she's sexist, misandrist, and a hypocrite. Sex Discrimination Commissioner Elizabeth Broderick says the lack of women in Parliament has a direct impact on major issues affecting women. We absolutely do. We absolutely, we absolutely need power to be shared in the Parliament between men and women. She told ABC Local Radio. Well. She has a tongue in her head, doesn't she? I say that Broderick has the power to defend a baby boy, but won't. Elizabeth Broderick won't defend a baby boy, the most helpless little creature in, in a human society, uh, uh, babies, baby girls and baby boys. She'd defend a baby girl from uh, genital mutilation, but she wouldn't utter one word in defence of a baby boy. She has a tongue in her head, and she has the power to defend a baby boy, but won't. Indeed, a letter from her staff member to me told me that uh, protecting little boys is not a priority of hers. But let's read on. Her comments come after Liberal Party backbencher Sharman Stone said the party should introduce mandatory quotas to boost the number of women in Parliament. Well, as I've said, the Sex Discrimination Office itself has always been a girl's own affair. It's not Parliament, no, but it's always been a girl's own affair. There were no men except temporary men, just relieving, you know, just temporary men. It's always been a girl's own affair. So who was the best qualified? Were all those women, a whole series for the past couple of decades, a whole series of female uh, sex discrimination commissioners, were they the best qualified for the job or were they given the job because they were women? I think it's most highly likely that they were given the job just because of their gender. That's why. Prime Minister Tony Abbott has been criticised for only having one woman in his cabinet, Foreign Minister Julie Bishop. The Labour Party has long had a quota system in place but is yet to achieve its target of women in 40% of seats. Quota system. Quota system, that's uh, token women. 
as, as I've just said, token women and quota system, you don't necessarily get the best qualified person for the job doing that, you don't, do you? Like you might get um, Broderick as sex discrimination commissioner who is a sexist and misandrist person, a hypocrite. Uh, as I've said before, it's like having a carnivore in charge of the vegetarian society. By just appointing women as sex discrimination commissioners, for example, you don't necessarily get the best qualified person for the job. You don't. In the case of Elizabeth Broderick and a whole range of other women, that a whole series of women, including, say, Quentin Bryce and Prue Goward, you get people who did never utter a word in defence of male genital integrity. They did not. So you didn't really get the best qualified people for the job at all by appointing women. You don't automatically get the best qualified person for the job. You get people who are sexist and misandrist. You do. It's just a sad fact. Dr Stone has suggested the Liberals look to Labour for ideas about how to get women into politics. We've got to be, I think, much more structured about making sure women come through, Dr Stone said. I don't care about that tokenism label. Bring it on if you must. So, as I've said, decades of women as sex discrimination commissioners or all misandrist in that not one has ever uttered a word in defence of male genital integrity. Not one. If you know that one has, please tell me. Women should have greater role in Parliament, says Broderick. According to Ms Broderick, women make up just one third of Australian, Australian parliamentarians. Well, I say they are half the population, are they not? Can they not vote women into power? Why not? Can't they vote with their feet? Can't they vote? Can't they vote people? Can't they vote fit women into power? I think it's important that women's voices are heard at the highest level, she said. At the highest level, we've just had Gillard as a Prime Minister and a woman. And Gillard, of course, defended females from, uh, she said, there's no place in any religion or culture for female genital mutilation. She did not utter a word in defense of baby boys who are actually genitally, you know, it's a common practice to genitally mutilate males in Australia. Gillard didn't speak out for them, did she? Nor did Nicola Roxon, her health minister, who was indeed pro-genital mutilation. She argued for the benefits of male genital mutilation on health grounds, religious grounds and... Yes, cultural grounds, supposed health grounds anyway. Gillard didn't toss a penny towards uh, defending male genital integrity, but she tossed half a million dollars towards uh, defending uh, female genital integrity. She says the lack of, and I mean it's not as exactly as if, girl, if the genital mutilation of girls is commonplace in Australia, is it? But the genital mutilation of boys in Australia is quite commonplace. She says the lack of women in Parliament has a direct impact on issues such as domestic violence, working conditions for women, their leadership roles and pay equality. Domestic violence, surely a boy sitting in a pool of blood should be defended, surely his genital integrity should be defended. As I've said, if any of those boys are in, uh, had there were some boys recently sitting in pool of, pools of blood who had to be airlifted because of their genital mutilations to a nearby hospital. If any of those boys had died, Elizabeth Broderick wouldn't have batted an eyelid. She wouldn't have uttered one word in defence of their genital integrity. And that is differential and unfavourable treatment of boys and differential and, and unfavourable treatment of boys coming from the Sex Discrimination Commissioner herself. And here she is talking about domestic violence. This person is talking about domestic violence but could turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to the screams of baby boys being genitally mutilated. She could, quite easily. That's feminism for you too, by the way. Ms Broderick says she supports any measure that would boost the number of women in Parliament. Why don't they vote themselves in? There is an assumption well-educated Australian women will just trickle into positions of power. We know it's not true, she said. As I've said, well-educated, yes, well-educated doesn't mean they're the best person for the job. Elizabeth Broderick, I'm sure, is well-educated, so is Prue Gard and Quentin Bryce, but they weren't necessarily the, the best person for the Sex Discrimination Commissioner's job, were they, when you consider that they, none of these women did defend little boys' genital integrity. None of them did. If you know that they did, please let me know. Positions of power. Quentin Bryce, Governor-General. She was a, a sex discrimination commissioner. She said not about male genital integrity, which is differential and uh, unfavourable treatment of boys. Yes, and positions of power. Broderick herself is in a position of power, isn't she? But she's, she keeps mum. She won't talk about male genital mutilation. She, she, won't, she won't utter a word. 
what we do still need is some active intervention. So that means uh, affirmative action, I suppose. I'd like some affirmative action from Broderick. Affirmative action. I'd, I'd, it's about time she started defending boys. Ms Broderick is calling on men to use their power to help achieve gender equality in Australia. This woman has power herself and she could help achieve gender equality, gender equality in, uh, in Australia by arguing for the degenderization of the uh, genital mutilation laws. I call on Broderick, a hypocrite and misandrist, to dare to speak up for a baby boy. Calling on men to use their power to help achieve gender equality in Australia. Speaking on International Women's Day, Ms Broderick said that while progress was achieved last year in a number of areas, more men need to advocate for women's rights. I say here, if boys sitting in a pool of blood died, Broderick would have kept mum. That's hardly a... Well, that's hardly advocating for uh, for boys' rights, is it? And we must keep in mind that the Office of the Sex Discrimination Commissioner isn't a women's commissioner. It is a sex discrimination commissioner. She's not there as the minister for, for uh, women's rights or anything, is she? She's not. She's there to, uh, to make sure that both men and women are discriminated against on grounds of gender. Power in a country like Australia, in, in fact, in, in fact, any country in the world, largely sits in the hands of men, she said. Even though women are half the population and have, have well, at least in Australia, they have the power to vote. I say you are half the population, you can vote women in, you can vote with your feet. You can. And if we want to create change, we need good, decent men taking the message of gender equality to other men. I say Broderick's message of equality is to stay silent when genital mutilation uh, of boys occurs. When boys are sitting in pools of blood, she ignores uh, boys in, in sitting in pools of blood. That's not decent of women, is it? That's not a decent example of any woman, from, from any woman. That's not a decent example to remain silent and, 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 and blind and deaf when uh, boys are being genitally mutil mutilated. That's what's going to create change in countries, she said, a message of gender equality to other men. So she there is the misandrist and sexist and hypocritical uh, sex discrimination commissioner who will only defend uh, uh, a genital integrity of girls and uh, she considers a uh, you know, message of gender equality. What would she know about gender equality? That's what's going to create change in countries. Anyway, we're talking about change here in Australia. Still, this was an international, international Women's Day speech. Men stepping up support, but more advocacy needed. The Sex Discrimination, Discrimination Commission says men have stepped up their support in recent times, but more advocacy is needed. I think the real shift we saw in the last year was we had more men getting on board, stepping up and being prepared to do some strong adv advocacy around gender equality. And that's got to be a real positive, she said. So, like recently, in recent years, there was an army chief. He has, he has a female to write his speeches. That tells you a lot, doesn't it? He was uh, uh, an army chief talking about sexual harassment of women. And he has a female to write his speeches. He can't write his own speeches. They're written by a female, apparently. So he's just the mouthpiece for uh, something that a woman has written. And Gillard's anti-misogyny uh, anti speech, that apparently was crafted by a man, apparently. So according to the ABC a couple of months back. Uh, Gillard's anti-misogyny speech, famous and viral on YouTube, was uh, crafted by a man. Yes, what I strong yes strong advocacy around gender equality. What I strongly advocate about gender equality is that sexist and misandrist people like uh, Broderick should be uh, that shouldn't be in in they shouldn't be in such positions of power. They're not qualified. You aren't qualified to be the sex discrimination commissioner. You shouldn't be in that position of power if you only speak up for one gender. You aren't there, uh, it's, you're not a women, women's commissioner, you are there as a sex discrimination commissioner. And if you leave little boys to sit in pools of blood while defending girls, that is hypocritical it's, and it's misandrist and it's sexist, it's differential and unfavourable treatment of boys, and you should indeed know better. It's obviously though that you think that, uh, yes, 
you go on to say 93%, currently 93% of chief executive officer positions in Australian corporations are held by men. You're talking about CEOs, aren't you? So female CEOs are more important to you. That's your priority, more important than a boy sitting in a pool of blood undefended, his genital integrity undefended. So, you know, are you really qualified as Sex Discrimination Commissioner? That's a good question. I ask that question. I dare to ask that question, don't I? You can sit there knowing that boys are sitting in pools of blood undefended, their genital integrity undefended, and go on about CEOs. You've told me in a letter to me that your prior, well, one of your staff members told me that your priority was, yes, you had, well, your priority wasn't the, uh, uh, defending little boys' genital integrity. It, it's obvious to me that your priority is CEO, women being CEOs, women having power. You have some power, my dear, but you can't speak up for the genital integrity of a little helpless baby boy. Ms. Broderick says International Monetary Fund Managing Director Christine Lagarde, who visited Australia last week, was an impressive woman in a senior leadership role. You're more in, impressed, you're, you're, that's your priority, senior leadership roles for women. You, you, you don't give a fig about uh, little boys who are being genitally mutilated, do you? Says a lot about you, doesn't it? Your feminist ideology, where your priorities are. You've said what your priorities are. You've said that defending male genital integrity is not a priority of yours. You've said that, but you will defend female genit genital integrity, even though that is a rare event in Australia compared to male genital mutilation. Broderick, yes, an impressive woman in a senior leadership role. Broderick herself is, is uh, a misandrist and a hypocrite, and is oh, I'm not impressed by her as a, a sex discrimination commissioner, and that is a leadership role. It is a leadership role. Perhaps her talents would be better used elsewhere. Because we don't see women at senior leadership levels and in public life a lot, then we can minimise their contribution, she said. Well, Prue Goward and Quentin Bryce, they did nothing to protect boys from knife rape, did they? Baby boys from knife rape, they did nothing. Gillad was a Prime Minister. What the, what the F did she do? And uh, Nicola Roxon was, uh, was sexist and uh, misandrist as Gillard's health minister. As I said, she argued in favour of male genital mutilation, while uh, she argued the benefits of male genital mutilation while arguing against female genital mutilation. If we don't intentionally include women, what we do is unintention un unintentionally exclude them. That's a really important message. So Broderick, in, I say that Broderick intentionally excludes male genital integrity. She does. She has said it is not a priority of hers. Her priority is women CEOs and execs and ministers. That's more important to her, isn't it? Yes, she's not a minister for women. The Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Sex Discrimination Commission is not an office for the advancement of the feminist cause. It is not. Not as far as I know. And I think I've, yes, I've discussed that whole article now. And I've said what I wanted to say. I have. So, goodbye. See ya.